Hi friends! Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I make my coffee shop style lattes at home, which is a highly requested video. Ever since I started showing you guys a little bit of my coffee here and there, I've had a bunch of you ask, so today we are doing it and we are also just going to spend a rainy afternoon together. It is rainy and gray outside today and a little bit chilly, all the things. So we're just gonna spend the afternoon together. I'll take you guys with me. There may be an appearance from a tiny baby goat that we have in here with us at the moment. <laughs> um, and we'll see what we get up to. So if you're new around here, I share a lot of backyard homesteading content, motherhood content, family content, things like that. And I would love if you would subscribe if you like that kind of content. And if you're not new around here, as always, I'm so grateful for every video that you watch and just being a part of this community. I love you guys so much. I love getting to know you in the comments and truly I'm just so happy to have you here so let's go make some coffee okay actually pause we're going to take a few minutes to do a few dishes because this is the time of day that I usually get a lot of dishes done so we're gonna do that quickly so that the dish load does not get too overwhelming if you didn't know we don't have a dishwasher so I have to do them consistently throughout the day or it gets a little overwhelming so we're gonna do that real quick bread out of the oven real quick because I had some sourdough that I was baking. Just got done. Oh. Don't mind my messy stove that I haven't wiped off from lunch yet. So, you know, there's that. Okay, let's go over a few coffee basics real quick before I make the coffee so you kind of know where I'm coming from. Don't mind my dishes over here in the corner because I just obviously did all those and they're not dry yet. So, you know, reality around here. But I use a Breville Bambino coffee machine. I can link it below if you want to find information about it. It's an espresso machine. Sorry, I said coffee machine. It's an espresso machine and I love it. I have had the espresso machine for almost two years now and it is the best thing ever. There is a larger one that someday maybe I will like. One, it's really pricey, but honestly it takes up a ton of counter room is the reason I didn't get it. So this one is a much smaller, fits with our counter space and it does a great job. Wow, it is hot in here because I bake my bread at 500 degrees and it is real hot in here now so sorry if I look sweaty because I literally am <laughs> wow it's gonna be a real vlog here um background on coffee I have liked coffee since high school but I was always the kind of person that would go get you know frappuccinos maybe occasionally iced latte stuff like that from coffee shops occasionally it was never like an everyday thing for me honestly most of the time it wasn't even a weekly thing but I did enjoy coffee however I got to a point really coffee is kind of what started like my from scratch cooking in a way which sounds really weird but I am a Dr. Pepper lover that is my thing that I would get every single day for years and years and years and I still drink Dr. Pepper not every single day I go through seasons where I get it more and then I'll get it less whatever but I wanted to cut back a little bit on that I didn't care to cut it out completely I'll be honest I didn't you know I think that there is a balance to everything in life and Dr. Pepper is one of those things that I really enjoy I grew up my mom drank it every single day my mom does not drink it anymore though so props to her but I'm not at that point in my life. I enjoy Dr. Pepper, so I'm gonna get some Dr. Pepper and I'm also gonna cook my bread from scratch and, you know, have my chicken eggs from my backyard while I go get my McDonald's Dr. Pepper. It's fine, I am who I am. <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to cut back a little bit on that because one, it adds up quickly. I mean, that's a lot of money to go get a drink every single day. And I really enjoy having a drink. Like, that is something throughout my day I really look forward to, whether it's a Dr. Pepper or a coffee or whatever, a drink that's not water that I like kind of make um, or go get 
is something that I really look forward to that brings me a lot of joy. So I would just look forward to that throughout the day. And obviously if I had Dr. Pepper, I only got that once a day. And so I started wanting to make coffee at home and I'm the kind of person that jumps all in. <laughs> and so I didn't even have a coffee machine. We literally were like, what, five years into our marriage, I think at that point five or six years into our marriage, still didn't have a coffee machine, anything like that. And I went out and got an espresso machine and that was the first thing. So it was a big learning curve, um, but I love it. Now I've been, I make all my syrups from scratch. I have a video on that. So if you wanna see that, I'll link that here so you can go see that. And I did a lot of research at the beginning on how to make the best at home coffee shop style lattes. Cause I loved iced lattes at coffee shops and I wanted to recreate that at home. So I'm gonna give you a few of the essentials really quick and then I'm gonna show you how I make my coffee. So the first thing is the ingredients that you will need. So the first thing I'll mention, milk, or you can use half and half if you prefer that. Whatever milk type beverage that you like, you'll need that. The next thing is milk syrup, which probably sounds really weird. I had never heard of this before, but like I said, I am a person that goes hard. <laughs> so I watched tons of YouTube videos on how to make coffee shop style lattes at home. And something that I discovered in doing that was a YouTube channel that was a coffee shop that showed how to make their exact drinks and their special secret thing was milk syrup. And what milk syrup is, is it's just evaporated milk and sweetened condensed milk mixed together. And this is essentially kind of like your, your creamer basically it's pretty sweet so when I first started making my lattes at home I did the extra sweet version which is two cans of sweetened condensed milk to one can of evaporated milk that quickly became too sweet for me so now I do one can of sweetened condensed milk and one can of evaporated milk so if you don't like it super sweet I would say this is this is the sweet spot um, but it makes it sweet enough but I don't know, it's just really, it's really yummy. So I will use milk syrup in my lattes and then the last thing is your like syrups to flavor your coffee. So I make all mine from scratch and I don't say that as like, ooh, looky there, I make them from scratch. I like the ingredients better, it's just a personal thing. I don't know, I can control more of it. And also I found that I couldn't really buy a ton of different kinds of syrups. They have some at the store, but some, I like to make some seasonally, like every season I like to try some new ones just to mix it up and make it really fun. And they don't always have all of those at the store. They'll have a few options, but so it was just something that was fun for me. And once I realized, like I said, this is kind of where cooking from scratch came from. Once I realized you could make them from scratch literally in like three to five minutes for most of them. It's so, so fast. Um, I just have always done it that way. I just started with that and it also saved money because I was looking and the syrups were like, I don't know, seven to $10 for one bottle, which granted, obviously it's way cheaper than going to the coffee shop. But if I wanted to have multiple on hand, you know, I was gonna be spending 40 bucks just for the syrup. So anyways, this is vanilla that I'm using today. You can use whatever kind of syrup. My recipe stays the same no matter what kind of syrup I use, but there's that. So those are the ingredients. Now let's go make some coffee. Okay, first things first is you're gonna get your espresso out. If you don't have espresso, you can use instant espresso powder, or you could also just use regular coffee or like an iced coffee concentrate. The measurements are just gonna be different with the recipe that I put in the description. So get your espresso grounds out and go ahead and get them ready to put into your coffee machine. Obviously, tamp it down and get that ready to go. Then you're gonna make your espresso. I do two shots of espresso for this recipe. And then you're gonna add two tablespoons of whatever syrup you're gonna use for the latte of your choice. Today I'm using vanilla, and I use two tablespoons of syrup no matter what kind of syrup I'm using for the day. You're gonna stir that into the hot espresso so it kind of melts it in there. And then I add a fourth of a cup of milk syrup. After that, I add three fourths of a cup of milk, and then I just make sure it's mixed really well together. Sometimes I don't even have to mix it, it already is, it just depends. And then for ice, just add ice to a glass and pour it over. Okay, and then really the process is just different whether I'm doing hot or iced. Obviously I'm making ice today. I prefer iced in general, usually. When I was pregnant, there was a season that I did not like coffee. Actually, I didn't like coffee for the majority of my pregnancy this last time. Um, and then I only liked hot coffee, which was strange because normally iced coffee is my favorite. But I also, like in the winter and fall, I'll do a 
a combination of both. So I'll do like hot coffee in the morning and then I'll do an iced in the afternoon. So the only difference, the recipe is the same as far as making coffee. The only difference is that when I brew or when I, you know, make the espresso or brew coffee, if you're doing that, whatever, um, I stir in the syrup while it's hot and get it all dissolved and everything like that. And I do that in a coffee cup instead of the glass Pyrex container. And then I will pour the milk syrup in cold and stir that in. And then I froth my milk so that it's really hot and then pour that in on the top. So that's how I do it if it's hot. So you can do the exact same thing, just depending on how you like it. Now it's officially ready. This is my favorite glass at the moment, by the way. My best friend got this for me uh, last year, I guess. I can't remember exactly when. Anyways, it just says Raising Disciples, but we were talking the other day about how perfect it is because most of, I have several glasses like this because they are honestly perfect for iced coffee. Um, and they're all, I'm guessing 12 ounces. And so we're thinking that this is maybe 16 ounces or maybe the other glasses are 16 ounces and this is 20 ounces. I don't know, but it's just a little bit bigger and it's enough that when I put a lot of ice in there, it doesn't fill it all the way to the top and it's the perfect size. So, you know, just love this glass. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so anyways, I know that was kind of maybe silly to show you my coffee routine, but I genuinely have had a lot of people ask. And so I figured I'd go ahead and put it in a vlog so that you guys could reference that. I'll put the recipe below so you have that. Obviously, it's so much more affordable to make it at home. And it's gotten to the point like we don't ever buy coffee out. I will say sometimes I get the urge to buy coffee out more for the experience of going to a coffee shop than the taste of it because I actually genuinely like my lattes at home more than I like the coffee shop lattes anymore. Which is not to say anything bad about the coffee shop, it's probably just that I've gotten so accustomed to my own lattes that, you know, I know how to make them exactly like I like and I don't know how to do that at the coffee shop anymore. So definitely worth it to figure out. It's been really fun to experiment with and like I said, this really is kind of where my cooking from scratch came from because I was spending so much time perfecting like my iced coffee recipe, getting that down, trying my syrups, all of that. And then I just wanted to progress into cooking more things from scratch. And then it was sourdough from there. And then more and more like meal components. And then now we cook pretty much everything from scratch. Not to say that there's not balance and that we don't occasionally eat out or, you know, buy a box of Annie's macaroni or something like that at the store for lunch on quick days that does occasionally happen but the majority of the time we are eating from scratch and like all of our bread products we make here now which is like completely wild that's mostly just because Matt's gluten-free and gluten-free is freaking expensive if you didn't know so anyways long tangent over that's all I have to say about that in other life updates I'll update you briefly um, on homestead things we things are doing well around here I'll show you the baby goat in a second and explain that situation so I'm not going to talk about the goats at this moment because I will here in a second but the garden is doing well I have a ton of seedlings that need to be up potted and put in their own containers and I keep putting it off <laughs> because I've been busy and now the next four days are raining so there's that. <laughs> um, I do need to do that really soon though and I have some more flowers I need to start and then I'm currently trying to decide if last year I had two cut flower beds and I was planning on doing that again this year but I'm kind of trying to decide if I should just do one cut flower bed and dedicate another bed to tomatoes which sounds probably crazy especially because I don't even like tomatoes. How hilarious is that? Um, but we can grow 10 tomato plants in the space that we have set up from last year. And so if I did the same setup in another bed, I could grow another 10, so that, then that's 20. But I was thinking about it the other day, and as far as like wanting to get started with canning and putting things up and not just fresh eating, I don't care about the tomatoes for me for fresh eating. Matt loves them, the kids love them, so I'm growing them for that. But as far as canning, we can use a ton of tomatoes for that. Like cucumbers, there's only so much you can do with cucumbers. I mean, other than pickles, we're not gonna eat that many pickles. However, I could put up, you know, diced tomatoes, just, just diced tomatoes that we could use in meals. I could make spaghetti sauce, I could make marinara sauce, I could make tomato paste. I mean, literally, I feel like it's kind of just endless on what I could do with tomatoes. And to have that put up for the year would be really nice. So we're kind of debating that, trying to decide what we need to do there, but it is starting to get a little warmer aside from these next few days so hopefully beginning of may we can get plants actually in the ground and they'll start growing and all that and i am very excited for that so that's the garden update not much has changed yet i can't wait to do garden tours this summer and all of those things but that's kind of the main thing we're working on around here right now is garden and goats <laughs> speaking of baby goats this is what we got going on in here we have our baby goat here in a little pack and play 
she's just chilling. The kids gave her a ball, even though obviously she doesn't do anything with it. But she's she's pretty precious, so she's hanging out in here with us. All right, this is Sugar, is what we have been calling her, and I'm gonna give her a bottle real quick. So let me try and do that real quick, and then I'm gonna kind of like force. Wow. Okay. Okay. She's probably gonna try and not do it well. Now that I have the camera on. There we go. Okay, okay, we're gonna be messy. It's a little bit of a messy process. <laughs> she just started on the bottle yesterday. Okay, let's see. We can do this. You got this, you got this. Okay, okay. Why are you acting crazy? You did this so well a few hours ago. There you go. There you go. Good girl. <laughs> all the outtakes, all the outtakes. There you go. There you go. Good girl. You got it. Girl, huh? you can chug it right down, huh? Good job. So what's going? Getting it in. Doing better. It's just a process to get it in there, huh? We did it guys. <laughs> we both end up a little bit wet um, after this. We're still getting it down. <laughs> um, sorry, I had to focus because she clearly doesn't have it fully down yet, but we're getting there. All right. Um, anyways, yes, we named her Sugar for now. So that's her temporary name. And she's doing great and mom is doing great. She could totally just be with her mom. However, last year we did. We had Churro, which was S'mores baby last year. We kept her. And so she raised her. She, they both came here when Churro was three days old. And so Churro was just on her until two or three weeks after she had her. We separated them at night and that's when we started milking. Well, I was talking to my friend Austin that's my goat mentor friend. And she said if we wanted S'mores milk supply to go up a lot more and stay up that we probably should start like right away. So basically after two days after she kitted, um, actually it was a little past that, but I think what she recommended is that the baby stay on her for 48 hours and we left her on her fully without doing anything for like the first three or four days. And then we brought her inside and there's a couple reasons for that. One being that she gets used to the bottle so that if someone wants to come pick her up before she's fully weaned, we can let her go as a bottle baby and she can do bottles. So we have that option because once they get past a certain point, if you don't get them on a bottle in the first few days, it's really, really hard to get them on the bottle and that can be a problem. So that was one reason. And then the other reason is to get s'mores milk supply up. And so what Austin had recommended was separating during the day and giving sugar bottles during the day and then putting them back together all night long so she can nurse as much as she wants and that's going to help get s'mores supply up. So we're testing that out. Honestly, I feel like even though we're a year into raising goats, I feel like there is so much to learn. And so we're testing this out, seeing how we like it. We also thought it can't help or it can't hurt. Um... To have her be a little friendlier too because she'll be inside with us and we're giving her bottles bottle babies are notoriously more friendly and just more comfortable with humans and so i'm hoping that doing it half and half you know she's still able to be with her mom so that we're not separating them right away or anything like that and they can still be together every night um, but then we're able to get her milk supply up a little bit more give her the bottle so she's used to that and also get her really really friendly and used to being handled by humans which is what you want so We'll see how it goes and we'll see if we do the same thing later this year. Um, we're taking chai and churro to be bred soon and so they will kid in the fall. Um, and we'll see if we'll do the same thing then or if we learn something. From, I'm sure we'll learn something from this either way. But that's what we're doing at the moment and we're just kind of experimenting and learning as we go and seeing what works best for us and what works best obviously for the goats and keeps everyone happy and healthy and all of those things. So yeah, 
we shall see but for now we have a baby goat that hangs out with us inside during the day and honestly she's really chill she doesn't make too much noise yesterday when i left the room she would kind of cry out for a second or two um and today she hasn't really been doing that too much of course i've been in and out all day but she's yeah i don't know she hangs out in the pack and play and we bought one off facebook marketplace for ten dollars so that i can have that as my baby goat pack and play because whether we do this again or not, it's kind of good to have one on hand just in case a mom doesn't want to take a baby or if for some reason you have something go wrong and a mom dies, you know, I don't know. It's just good to have on hand. So there are lots of reasons you can end up with bottle babies and we have one at the moment. But the other exciting news is that we, so this baby will be sold um, because we are wanting to switch more towards Nubians is our thought anyways. And so we don't need another Nigerian dwarf here, sadly, although we're, all already attached and especially our kids are really attached to her but we do plan on selling her and we have a wait list available so if you're interested and you know in kansas or oklahoma or anything like that definitely shoot us a message on instagram at kyena matt and i can add you to the wait list and send you the information but um we are getting a bottle baby this weekend that is going to stay here on the backyard homestead with us and it's a little nubian bottle baby she's beautiful we're so excited to have her here um, she comes from really good milk production lines and all of that. So we're very excited about that and we'll definitely introduce you once we get her. Thanks for spending this rainy afternoon with me and seeing how I make my coffee. Hopefully that was helpful or enjoyable to watch. And for all my coffee loving friends, I have the recipe down below so you can find that and make your own coffee shop style lattes at home. Experiment with different syrups, all of those things. Um, and thanks for spending another day with me and my, my baby goat at the moment. <laughs> Uh, my life is so interesting these days <laughs> in the best way but anyways I'm super glad to have you here if you're new around here I would love if you would subscribe for more backyard homesteading and family life and cooking from scratch content we would love to have you a part of this community and if not I will see you in the next video bye friends